for the sunshine, Lord. If you're <laughs> We're ready whenever you are, Lord. Your will be done. Amen. Amen. <laughs> we do live in the rainforest. That's true. Uh, so as most of you know, we like to open up service with a bit of the word and some prayer. And this morning, because of it's Mother's Day, the word that I received was from the book of Psalms. Chapter 139, yeah. verses 13 and 14, where the word says, For you were formed, for you formed my inward parts. You knitted me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Thank you, Lord. Wonderful are your works. My soul knows it very well. Thank you, Lord. The Lord has knitted us in our mother's wombs. He knew us before we were even born. And then we are born to our mothers who raise us up to be men and women, children of God. Amen. What an amazing blessing that is. So if we can bow our heads this morning and prepare our hearts for worship. Father, we come before you as one family, the body of Christ, Lord. And we humbly come before your throne. And we offer our hearts to you, Lord. We offer our lives to you in worship. Your word says this is our true act of worship when we offer our lives to you. So, Lord, we humbly come before you. We praise you. We worship you. We honor you. We thank you. And, Father, we know that we celebrate Mother's Day today. But, of course, we know 
that we should be honoring our mothers every day of the year, Father. But we'll take this special day to give thanks to the mothers and give thanks to you for sharing your love with the mothers so that they can share your love with their children. What an awesome and, and beautiful thing that is. Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit rest upon us this morning as we continue in our worship. We pray for your presence to be here during our time of hearing the word and of fellowship, Lord. We love you so much, Father. We give you all of the glory, the honor, and the praise. And we pray in your Son, Christ Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thanks, Pastor Jason.
on us, for your guidance, your leading, you walk in us, that all that we do, all that we say, all that we even give thought to will be on earth as it is in heaven and no other. We love you, O oh Lord, and we thank you for this family gathering we have today. We thank you for your being here with us, touching our hearts, letting our minds know that we are the true children of the God who is above all. We love you, Father God, and Christ Jesus, my Lord. You are our way, our truth, and our lives. Yes. And we plead for your way, your truth, your life only, to be for our ways, our truth, and our lives. In your most righteous name we pray, and all God's Amen. children say, Amen. 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 Ladies and gentlemen, why don't you take your seats? If you feel like me, you know, Pastor Moku was sitting outside because his foot was bothering him the last two, three weeks. But like when he sits over here, Pastor Moku, we have him. We love you. Deliverer, my shelter, 
right after. And I put some translation so you can see that as well.
You may not be a mother, but in this church, right? You're the mother to the youth group. We're praying for the kids, right? We're encouraging our nieces and nephews. So if you didn't get a rose and you would like a rose, we have a rose for you. The second announcement I have is that um, today specifically is, is one of our, each one of us, one of our favorite person's birthday today. And that's our brother Steve over there. So if you could join me in singing happy birthday to Steve this morning, that would be awesome. Ready? All right. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday to you. Happy Happy birthday, brother. We love you so much. We love you. Um, so that's all the announcements that I have, but we have many wonderful announcements for you from our sister, Chris. She'll come down and, and give you an update. Thank you, Chris. Good morning. Guess what? God loves you. Yes. All right. So um, Monday, people will be getting together to pray for you. So if you have any prayer requests, you can put them in the basket back there or pass them to anyone. On Wednesday, Bible study, 5 o'clock right there. Amazing dinner as well. Wasn't that a uh, hula so beautiful this morning? I know you want to join them. Yeah? If you want to join, you don't have to dance in front of people. Um, and they usually uh, practice on Thursdays at 5, but you should double check with Keala to make sure that you don't come to an empty church, that they'll be here practicing. Double check, right? Right. Friday morning, Yard Ninjas at 8 a.m. You can join them too. And then Friday night is Celebrate Recovery at 6 o'clock. Um, if you don't know what Celebrate Recovery is, there's a table back there that can tell you some things, but it's for any hurt, habit, or hang-up. does not have to be alcohol or drugs. could be codependency, anger, frustration, anything. It's a great time. Um, I really recommend you come and check it out. Um, men's ministry is this Saturday. Yeah. It's always the third Saturday at 9 a.m. Women's ministry is always the last Saturday. That'll be the 25th at 8 a.m. only on Zoom. Is it right? 25th? Yes, yes. Okay. Thrift shop is always the first and third Saturday from 9 to 12. And they are looking for people to help them. So men or women, go volunteer at the thrift shop. Discipleship class is happening today from 12 to 2 over there. Backyard Kids Club, June, June 3rd through 7th. That's the first week after school's over from 10 to 2. And the theme is following Jesus changes everything. Is that right? Okay. And they're definitely looking for volunteers, people to help out there, but also to help out preparation, baking cookies, helping with check-in, whatever. Sandy is obviously in charge because I'm looking at her the whole time. And also Stacy. So if you are interested in helping out, check with one of them. Um, anything else you want to say about that? Good. Okay. Uh, we are currently on Zoom and YouTube Live. And we have a virtual home at newhopevolcano.com. If you want more information or you want to share things about our church with other people, you can just send them to the website to check things out. I send out a weekly email. If you'd like to know what's going on, give me your email and you'll find out. And um, hopefully you're seeing some places that you could serve if you're not currently serving. And you are thinking, huh, maybe I could help out with that or I could help out with this. Does not have to be a giant commitment. But if you're looking for something to do, let me know. I have a list. And all honor and glory. 
are his. Thank you, Chris. So thankful for Chris because she said men's ministry this Saturday. And I was like, huh? So the lucky thing, I was listening to the announcements, you know, <laughs> men's ministry this Saturday. Uh, we got one more announcement. No. OK, beautiful, beautiful. Um, all right. So we are about to collect the tithes and the offerings. Then, and there are two ways that you can give if you're here today. There is the website like. Uh, Chris said, newhopevolcano.com. There is a click down menu you can click on and it says give online. You can give your tithe or your offering that way. Or if you're in the building and you want to give your tithe or your offering, we have the offering bowl in the back where Grandma Sue's seat is. Uh, you can drop it off that way if you would like to. And of course, we say all of that just to say that if uh, you are visiting us for the first time, Please hold back on your money and just be blessed with what the Lord has in store for you this morning. If you're visiting us from another church, we ask that you too, please hold back on your money and take it to your home church. And we ask that if this is your home church, that you just give with a cheerful heart. If we could bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning to give you thanks, Lord. I've heard so many testimonies already just this morning about situations where people are struggling, but you always show up, Lord, and you always give us strength. You give us guidance. You give us wisdom. You give us provision, Lord. And it's such an amazing thing to know that when we are struggling, that you are always with us, that we can turn to you in every situation. And so, Lord, this morning we lift our tithes and our offerings up to you, and we pray that you multiply it in abundance, and we pray that we use it according to your will, Father. We are so grateful to have a place to come and worship you. We're so grateful that we can come and honor you, that we can glorify you, that we can be in your presence, that we can hear your word. And, Lord, I pray this morning that you speak through me, that the words that I share this morning are from you and not of me, Lord. We thank you so much for all that you do in our lives, and we look forward to all that you have in store for us as children of the Most High God. Lord, we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise, and we pray this morning in Christ Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen, amen. All right. All right. So good morning, my wonderful church family. I have been blessed once again to share the Word of God with you. And happy Mother's Day. You're going to hear that ten more times this morning to all the mothers who are in the building. And you know, we said when we first got started this morning that Mother's Day, just like most man-made holidays, shouldn't be celebrated just on one day, right? It should be celebrated every day. The Bible says to honor your mother and father. So we should be honoring our parents, our mother, every day, not just on Mother's Day. Same with Father's Day, right? Valentine's Day, that should be every day, right? Pastor appreciation? Oh, okay, okay, oh, just checking, just checking. <laughs> you know, my, me, myself, I've, I have many fond memories of my mother, and I'm so grateful for the lessons, the life lessons that I learned from her. But the greatest example of motherhood that I have been able to experience in my life is the example that my wife displays as a mother to my son. To see the way that she loves our son, to see the way that she guides him, leads him, disciplines him, corrects him, to see the way that she nurtures him through the good times, the bad times, the tears, the laughs, it's such an amazing Thing to see and she is such an amazing mother and I think that's true for a lot of the husbands here right Amen. that we get to see the motherly instincts that God has blessed our wives with through their relationship with our children and someone once wrote that Mother's Day is traditionally the day when children give something back to their mothers for all the spit they produce for washing dirty faces for all the old gum that they held in their hands, all the noses wiped, all the bloody knees made well with their kisses. This is the day mothers are rewarded for washing sheets in the middle of the night, 
driving kids to school when they miss the bus, enduring all those football and soccer games in the rain. It's a day of appreciation for making your children finish something they said they couldn't do, not believing them when they said, I hate you, or sharing their good times and their bad times, right? That was well put, I thought. What are mothers? Well, mothers are teachers. Mothers are disciplinarians. Mothers are cleaning ladies. Some mothers are gardeners and mowers of lawns. Mothers are nurses, doctors, psychologists, counselors, chauffeurs. They're coaches. Mothers are developers of personalities, molders of vocabularies, and shapers of attitudes. Mothers are soft voices saying, I love you. And mothers are a link to God, a child's first impression of God's love. Mothers are all these things and much, much more. Would you agree? So this description of a mother helps to give us insight on the heart of Salome, Zebedee's wife and the mother of Jesus' disciples, James and John, the sons of thunder. Right? If you know, you know. <laughs> she loved her son so much that when given an opportunity to make a special request to Jesus, she did exactly that. While in the presence of Jesus, she made her heart known to him by making an amazing request, a mother's request. And this is where we pick up in our notes this morning in the book of Matthew, chapter 20, um, verses uh, 20 to 23. The word says, Then the mother of the sons of Zebedee, Zebedee came to Jesus with her sons, bowing down and making a request to him. And he said to her, What do you wish? She said to him, Command that in your kingdom these two sons of mine may sit, one on your right and one on your left. But Jesus answered, You do not know what you are asking. And he said to the, to the boys, Are you able to drink the cup that I am about to drink? And they said to him, We are able. And he said to them, My cup you shall drink, but to sit on my right and my left, this is not mine to give, but it is for the one whom, uh, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared by my Father. So, so much to take away from these scriptures right here. But what I want to focus on was the mother's request this morning. And she had total faith that Jesus was the Messiah just because of what she requested. And we can learn a, a thing or two or three from Salome. And in your notes, I've given you three lessons we can learn from a loving mother on Mother's Day. And we'll start, we'll begin with number one. She wanted her children to be in the kingdom. She wanted her children to be in the kingdom. Now, as I was writing this message, I do want to preface by saying, we will be speaking about mothers. We will be speaking about children. But I think these scriptures are applicable for everyone. Because like I shared earlier, whether or not you have children, you don't have children, whether you're a mother or not, you have nieces, you have nephews, you have someone in your life who is a, a young person. And if you don't, you have the youth group. You should be praying for the youth group. <laughs> you should be praying for the youth group. Um, so it's applicable for everyone. So she, just like all of us, want our children to be a part of the kingdom of heaven. Amen? We should teach our children to love Jesus. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6, the word says, Train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. The greatest gift a parent could ever give a child is to know the Lord. Now, in my time studying the book of Romans, you know, from time to time I study the book of Romans, <laughs> But in my time studying for the Romans road, I came across a scripture in Romans ch chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. It's not in your notes, or it may be in your notes. Okay. Paul 
after explaining to the Jews that salvation is now for the Gentiles, the Jews began to give him some pushback. And the Jews said to him, well, if it's for the Gentiles, then what good is it to be a Jew? There's no good, no sense in being a Jew. And Paul responds to him, to them, in verses 1 and 2 of Romans chapter 3. He says, Then what advantage has the Jew, or what is the benefit of circumcision? Great in every respect, he says. First of all, that they were entrusted with the oracles of God. The Jews had a head start on knowing about God. The Gentiles had no idea. They're just coming into this. But the Jews knew all along. The benefit was great in every respect because they had the oracles of God. Oracles in the sense that they had the important messages and sayings from God, especially the supernatural ones. So it was a great advantage to be a Jew and to know God. The Jews received the very words of God. And it was a great advantage because it contained the truth about salvation. So the Jews had that knowledge ahead of time. The same can be said for a child who is raised up in the Lord. Isaiah has such a big advantage over, say, someone like myself who was not raised up in the Lord. And I don't think I've ever met anyone ever, and I don't know if that's the correct way to put that sentence, Kumu Wolfgang, you can correct me, but I don't think I have ever met anyone ever who said to me, I wish I had waited a little bit longer before I knew the Lord. I don't think I've ever had that conversation where someone said to me, I wish I had waited before I gave myself over to the Lord. On the contrary, I've had many conversations with people, including myself, who have said, I wish I knew Jesus sooner. I wish I had known about Jesus sooner. So we should all want our children to grow up knowing the Lord. And our daily prayer should be that they have their own personal relationship with Jesus. We want our children to be in the kingdom of God, just like Salome, which is the name of the mother of James and John. So how can we help them to know the Lord? It's important for us. It was important for her. So what can we do to help them to know the Lord? Well, I put in your notes a few ways that we can do that. Now, again, these are suggestions. These are a few things we can do. If you're not doing them, then they're great, great advice for you. Uh, if you are doing them, these are just a few suggestions. And letter A in your notes, it says that we can read our Bibles together. For starters, right, even as little kids. I remember, um, I know Jeannie was one of them. She gave Isaiah a little kid's Bible to read as little Bible stories. And so we did that with Isaiah for a while. And we read him uh, like picture books about Jesus. And then eventually he graduated from those picture books. And then he's, he says, I don't want uh, a picture book anymore. I want a Bible like you guys have. And so we got him a kid's NIV Bible, which is the one that he reads with us in the Wednesday night Bible study. He reads right out of that Bible. And so we've been reading the Bible with Isaiah since... I can remember. We've been reading Bible to him as long as, we, as long as we've had him. And letter B is, you can watch biblical cartoons or movies together. Now, this is just a suggestion, but you know, there is this cartoon series called Veggie Tales that we took advantage of when Isaiah was a child, that they would, little vegetables and fruits, and they would act out Bible stories. <laughs> and it was amazing. And you know, it's on our heart to watch the movie The Passion of the Christ with him, right? We, we have watched the, the series The Chosen with him. And I think those are all great ways uh, to share the Lord with your child. And it, the, the reason why it's so good and so special is because it's visual, so they can learn in a visual way, but also it's a conversation starter, right? If they see something they don't understand, that's a great opportunity to sit and speak to your children about what's going on. And so you can watch cartoons or movies. Or number C, let number C, uh, you can attend, bring them to youth group. Why wouldn't you bring them to youth group? You're here already, you might as well bring your kids to youth group. 
Auntie Stacy, Connie, Mahi, Sandy, they are all dedicating themselves to teaching your children about Jesus. And so anytime they're here or they're in youth group, I can guarantee that Stacy or whoever is leading youth group is teaching your children about Jesus. And so if you're not sure how to help them to get to know the, the Lord, bring them to youth group and I guarantee you they will learn a message about the Lord uh, that day. So that's the first lesson, that we all want our children to be in the kingdom. The second lesson we can learn from this scripture of a loving mother who made a uh, mother's request is number two, she not only wanted them to be in the kingdom, she wanted them to be actively involved. She wanted them to be actively involved. If they were seated at the right and left of Jesus, then they would see all that was going on in the kingdom. They would be right next to Jesus, seeing everything that was going on. And Salome wanted them to participate alongside Jesus in the kingdom of heaven. So not only do we want our children to know Jesus and have a personal relationship with him, but we want them to be actively involved in the kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. That means that we want them to be bold in their faith. We want them to share with others and to put others ahead of themselves, to teach others what they have learned about Jesus. Matthew chapter 19, verse 14, Jesus says this about the little children, about the kids. Jesus said, Let the children alone, and do not hinder them from coming to me, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. As parents, we should be encouraging our children to come to Jesus, to be involved in the ministry, making it easy, easy as possible for them, and allow them to ask questions. I think it's awesome when the kids are engaged and they're starting to ask questions and trying to work things out, work out their salvation. And we should be prepared to answer those questions. And if we were not, we can find someone who can help us answer those questions. So how can we help them? In, uh, in your notes, we ask this question. How can we help them to become actively involved in the kingdom? Three suggestions again. Number A, number A we, can, we can be examples to them, right? We can serve in the kingdom. We can be actively involved in the kingdom, and then they will see our, our example, and they will want to follow in our example. There's nothing better than setting the example for your child to follow because it makes it that much more easy for them to, to do what you are doing. Uh, I think it is... It's cute, it's funny, it's hilarious, and it's awesome that Isaiah is doing the PowerPoint in the morning because he is just following my example. He sees daddy doing it, he stands by daddy and watches, and next thing you know, he can take over and do it. The same can be said for a lot of our children in the youth group, is that they see other people doing it, and then they go ahead and they start doing it because they are following the example. Uh, of course, the Apostle Paul, one of our favorite people, says, imitate me as I imitate Christ, right? Imitate me as I imitate Christ. So we be an example to our children. Letter B, we encourage their growth. We encourage them as they are trying to serve and be a part of the kingdom. Um, when they handle situations biblically, that's something that needs to be encouraged. It needs to be acknowledged when they let someone go, go in the line ahead of them, or when they ask you to pray for someone, or when they share something with someone else, when someone else, when they want to come to church, isn't that a blessing when our children want to come to church? We need to encourage that. Even when they don't want to come to church, we still need to encourage them to come to church, right? These are biblical teachings in ways that we can encourage our children to be actively involved in the church. And let her see, give them opportunity to serve. Present them with opportunities, not only in church, but in your homes, at school. Allow them to have a servant's heart. And this is how they can be actively involved, by serving other people, uh, being a servant. Okay, so that was the second lesson. The third lesson we learned from this scripture is number three, 
she had high expectations, right? I mean, Jesus even said, you do not even know what you're asking me here. This position was so prized that only the Father could choose it. Jesus couldn't even give permission for them to sit on their right and their left. She had no idea what she was asking, but she asked anyway, right? Her request was so big that Jesus informed her that it's not my decision for me to, to make. But like Auntie Laura likes to remind us week after week, you have not because you ask not. So she was bold and she asked and she had high expectations for her children. And it doesn't hurt to ask, right? It's okay to have high expectations for our children when it comes to their relationship with Christ. We just have to be sure that we are managing those expectations and make sure we are edifying them and not causing them to stumble with our expectations. I told Stacy when Isaiah was very, very young, oh my goodness, okay, sometimes I share and, I, and then when Isaiah was very young, um, we didn't agree on what we were going to name Isaiah. I think I shared this with you guys. She wanted to name him Isaiah, a biblical name, Isaiah. And I was like, hey, my favorite basketball player is Shaquille O'Neal. I was thinking more like Shaxton, okay? <laughs> so if you, <laughs> if you can imagine Isaiah running here around here, but his name was Shaxton, right? No way. So she wanted to name him Isaiah. And uh, I told her when he was very young that I want him to play basketball. He, no matter what he does in his life, I want him to play basketball. I played basketball. He's going to play basketball. And she said, what if he doesn't want to play basketball? And I told her, well, I'm going to force him to play basketball <laughs> because my father forced me to play. And it was the best thing that happened to me in my childhood. But... <laughs> my dad forced me, so I was going to force him, right? What's good for the goose? <laughs> she didn't agree with that. But fortunately for me, God's favor fell upon me because he has such a great love and desire for basketball on his own. And, uh, <laughs> and on his own, I, you know, I encouraged him a little bit. But he's joined the basketball team. And he didn't have to experience getting dropped off at the gym and crying for the whole, whole practice like I did. But the truth is, if he didn't want to play, I would be a little disappointed. That's true. I can't deny that. But it's far more important for me that he understands who he is in Christ than to play a game that I love. You know what I mean? And so our job is to teach our children to understand that before they are our children, they are children of the Most High God. John chapter 1 and verse 12, the word says, But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And that is a verse, a scripture that I need my son to hold on to and understand and grasp. That he gave, uh, whoever believed in his name, he gave right to them to become children of God. Our expectation, like Salome, is a high one because of what is at stake, right? We should help our children to understand who they are in Christ because it's a privilege and an honor to be a child of God. And at the same time, managing our expectations for them. Listen, we all know mother knows best. We know that. We get it. We, want, we all want what is best for our kids. Uh, having a relationship with Jesus, however, is personal, it's intimate, and it's individual, and it's different for everyone. Believe me when I say to you that I have expectations for my son to have a relationship with the Lord and to serve in the kingdom. My expectations are very high, but I also understand that our relationship with Christ is individual and it's different for everyone. God has a plan for you and for me and for our children. And so how can we manage our expectations for our children? I put that in your notes as well this morning. Uh, letter A is we can manage our expectations by praying for them. And not only our own children, 
but praying for all the children. You know, Stacy and I and, and, and Chris, we all work at a school. There's over 300 kids at that school. And we love those kids and we pray for those kids. We do. We will be praying for them at the end of summer. We pray for them when the school year begins. We pray for the children. For the children. And not just them, but their friends. And, and dare I say, their boyfriends, their girlfriends, their husbands, their wives. We need to pray about everyone in their lives, everyone around them. And while we're praying, you know, my prayer for Isaiah is to be abstinent until marriage and have one wife and, and that's it, nothing else, right? Is that too much to ask? <laughs> Thank you guys for agreeing with me. Thank you guys. I will show him what the Bible says about that, but he's ultimately the one that has to make the decision. The, the 10 grandbabies, on the other hand, is non-negotiable. We need 10 grandbabies. So letter B how, uh, on how we can manage our expectation is that we trust in God's will. We trust in God's will, not our will and what we want. We know what we want, but we trust in God's will for what he wants for our children, right? There's this story that I share from time to time that really put this in perspective for me. There is a pastor that I respect and I watch on YouTube. Uh, his name is John Piper. I don't know if you guys heard of him. He has a son named Abraham, a strong biblical name. The son Abraham has turned away from the faith. And he's now making TikTok videos and, and speaking badly about the faith, about his father. And so I can only imagine that John Piper did everything he possibly could to raise his son up to know the Lord. And this is where I come to the understanding that we can't make that decision for them. Abraham, his son, has to make that decision for himself. And he's chosen to turn away. Now, I only imagine that John Piper's expectation was very high for his son. And so when his son didn't meet the bar, uh, John Piper is going to have to trust in God's will for his son, that his son is called, and that his son will one day have his heart soften to receive Christ once again. So we trust in God's will for our children. They're not going to always do what, what we want them to do. At 10 years old, Isaiah doesn't always do what I want him to do. <laughs> and the final thing, letter, letter C, is what we can do to manage our expectations is to remember our conversion. Remember how it was for us, right? I mean, maybe some of you, maybe a handful of you, were raised up in the church and you never turned away and everything went perfectly and smoothly. I don't think that's anybody, but <laughs> our conversion, we went through things. We had to go through things. We had to experience things in life. All the while, Jesus was calling us to him, calling us to him. You know, I've shared many, many times and I'll quickly share again, but ever since I was in kindergarten, the Lord had been calling me to him. The Lord had been calling me to him. Over and over again, I felt a calling on my heart to the Lord. But I went through so many things in my life before I came to my conversion. No one can force any of us to do anything, but God is calling us. And I pray that Isaiah will be a pillar for the Lord, that he will be so in love with Jesus that that will be the most important aspect of his life. I pray for that. And Stacy is doing everything she can with everything that the Lord has equipped her to teach Isaiah about who he is in Christ. And I believe that is the same for all of us here. We all have the same desire that we want our children, our nieces, our nephews, our grandchildren to grow up in the Lord. And there are so many amazing stories about mothers in the Bible. And real quickly, uh, I'll just go over a few of them. We have Sarah, the wife of Abraham and the mother of Isaac, who trusted the Lord to give her a son in her old age. Uh, that story is in Genesis chapter 17, verse 16. I'll share with you a scripture from that story. It says, I will bless her and will surely give you a son by her. I will bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. Kings of people will come from her. The mother of all nations is what God promised to her. We have Jochebed, the mother of Moses, 
who saved his life by sending him down the Nile River. That story takes place in Exodus chapter 2. And here's an excerpt from that, verses 9 and 10. Uh, So the woman took the baby and nursed him. And when the child grew older, she took took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. She saved not only Moses' life, but all of the Israelites' life that were in, in, in Egypt. This mother that God used. We have Elizabeth, mother of John, John the Baptist, filled with the Holy Spirit, the word says in Luke chapter 1, verses 41 and 42. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child that you will bear. Mary, the mother of Jesus, the humble servant of the Lord, says this in the book of Luke, chapter 1, verse 38. I am the Lord's servant. May it be as you have said. And then the angel left her. She was submissive to God's will and not her own. And then finally we have Auntie Lani, the mother of the church. Auntie Lani, let's give her a round of applause. Yes. I don't know where she is, but she's serving, right? And I can speak on this way, 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 way more than anyone else, okay, about Auntie Lani being the mother of the church, because she truly is like a mother to me in a lot of ways. But she has a heart of a mother for our church family. She's one of the leaders on the prayer team. She has a heart for God's people. She's always concerned for each and every one of you. She's reaching out to me multiple times a week. How's this person doing? How's that person doing? Do you need any prayers? She's always concerned and looking for updates because she wants to lift us, lift us up to the Lord. She does whatever she can to make things go smoothly on Sunday. She's involved in every aspect. We have no idea. Sometimes I'm surprised, you know, when she's coming up to me and asking me about certain things. She's involved with the church in more ways than we know. Uh, To Auntie Lani, we are all her children. She laughs when things are going well. She cries when we are struggling. She encourages us. She edifies us. She gives us scoldings when we need it. And nobody gets more scoldings than me. Trust me. And I think it's because I'm the favorite child. I don't want to say that, but I think I'm... I know. We'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. But I do want to close um, by thanking all of the mothers who are with us this morning. Uh, Thank you for not only giving us life, but for sharing the love of God with us. You are an inspiration. We want to pray for you. We want to thank you. And not just today, but every day. Amen. Can we bow our heads? Father, we thank you so much for your word. Your word is so good for our souls, Lord. We thank you for the examples that you give us, the examples that we can follow and apply in our lives. And Father, I pray that we can have the heart of Salome, that we can make that request for our children, that Lord, please allow our children to be a part of your kingdom and allow them to be active, not just a part of it, but actively involved in the kingdom. And Lord, you know that you know the desires of our hearts, Lord. You know that we do have high expectations for them. But above all else, Lord, above everything else in our life, we pray for your will to be done. And we trust fully in your will and your plan, not only for our lives, but for our children's lives as well. We thank you, Lord, for the mothers. We thank you that you knew us before we were even born, that you knitted us in our mother's womb. We thank you for the different examples that we have in the Bible of the different mothers who are, were obedient to you, trusting in you, Lord. And I pray that can be the same for us as well. Congregation, we have reached the point in the message where we want to offer those who do not have an 
relationship with Jesus to begin one today. Now, of course, we always preface that by saying that in order to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your heart must be open to receive that. There are times in our lives, like I shared earlier, that we feel called to the Lord. And maybe that's you this morning, whether you're here or on Zoom, and you feel like you're being called to the Lord. And you want to make that decision for yourself to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We're going to say a prayer this morning. We're going to provide the words for you. But the book of Romans chapter 10 and verse 9 says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And so if you are ready to confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, granting salvation to all who believe, then please say this prayer. And by saying this prayer, you're asking Jesus to come into your life, to be the leader of your life. I do want to ask the rest of the congregation to please repeat after me as well in saying this prayer so that we can say it together and edify those who are saying it for the first time. So if you could please repeat after me. Heavenly Father, thank you for Jesus. Dear Jesus, I'm a sinner. I have done lots of things on my own. I have not always asked for your help or your advice. I want to change that now. This morning, I recognize you as my forgiver, and I want to follow you as my leader. Come into my life as best as I know how, for as long as I know how, I will follow you. So now I say, so that you can hear me, so that I can hear me, so that my neighbor can hear me, and the devil can hear me. Jesus Christ is my Lord. I will follow him and him alone. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me first. Father, I thank you for those who have said that prayer for the first time. I pray that you make your presence known in their heart, Lord. Father, we thank you that you could have placed us anywhere in the world this morning, but you chose to place us right here in a small town in Volcano, Lord. And we're so grateful to be a part of this church body, this family. We thank you for the food that you have provided. We pray that it be nourishing to our minds and our bodies. We pray that we can replicate what the first church did in gathering together and sharing the word of God and breaking bread with one another. We pray that your spirit continue to rest on us as we fellowship in our time here. Father, we lift all the mothers up to you and we just pray a a double portion blessing for them today, Father, for, for all that they do in our families. Father, we love you so much. We give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise. And we pray in your Son, Christ Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. But the fact that you were here in Volcano is a great uh, a blessing to us. We're going to sing one more song. If you feel like singing, you can stay in the room and sing. If you're ready for our hospitality and refreshments, just exit through the door there on my left. You can start walking like Mike is right now. You're not going to hurt my feelings that you walk out before I sing, but that's all right. <laughs> if you choose to leave and you're going to take advantage of the sunshine, if you, I don't know if you're a Volcano resident or if you live close to Volcano, but we've only been averaging about 30 minutes a day, so this is looking this looking good. But please be aware, when you get to Highway 11, the cars go up and down there very, very quickly, so please uh, look both ways before you get up onto the highway, okay? So whatever you do, God bless you, and have a great rest of the week.